At this point, seizures, 100 seizures a day, friendships were very rare. When I said a friend's on the phone, she was like over the moon, and this friend ended up being Mr. Rogers. <laughs> It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Whenever my mom and dad had to get ready for work or cook dinner, they would always send in my brother, and we would always watch Mr. Rogers. I felt like he was talking directly to me and nobody else. Doctors can't tell what children are thinking and feeling by looking through their equipment or any other way. Only you know what you're thinking and feeling. It was her third week into kindergarten and I received a phone call from the school principal. By the time I got into the nurse's office, I noted, I had never seen a seizure before, but she was reaching up to me with her left hand, but her entire right side was drooping. We went to the hospital. There was atrophy in her brain. For a couple of days, she was okay. And then she had another seizure and another seizure, we realized that the left hemisphere was slowly shrinking. We would go from doctor to doctor and hospital to hospital and nobody knew what was wrong with her. When it got really bad, it was, what, 100 seizures a day? It was like being on a roller coaster and you can't get off. You are my friend. You are special. For some reason, for the entire half hour that Mr. Rogers was on the TV screen, I didn't have a seizure. I just found his voice comforting. She would, at the end of every show, she would tell him, what? I love you, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> She's getting worse and worse. And then one doctor finally said, there's this one in 10 million brain disease. It's extremely rare. There's no cure for it. Each day, her brain cells were dying. When we finally made the decision that the surgery was the only way that she was gonna get any relief, I found the number to Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, called and talked to the secretary, explained that she was going in for this horrendous surgery. I said, could he send her an autographed picture or maybe a note that she could take with her to the hospital? And I didn't expect for him to call. He called and I said to Beth, Beth, there's a friend on the phone for you. And she-, she I was got, over the moon. I told him things I would never tell my mom or my dad. Like I told him about the surgery and how I thought I might die and I didn't want to die because I didn't want to leave my brother. It was like talking to an old friend. It was amazing just that one hour how much she talked to him, not just Mr. Rogers himself, but King Friday, Queen Sarah, Lady Elaine, and I, I just remembered uh, Daniel Striped Tiger um, ending the, the phone call and how he said he loved you yeah. and that you were going to be okay. That night, she went into a coma. They had no idea um, what caused it. I just remember praying, dear God, please let her come out of this. It was almost two months in a coma. Well, Mr. Rogers would call the hospital every day to check up on me. And when he found out I wasn't improving, he decided to make a trip. And he said, I'd really like to come, but I'd like it to be between Beth and I. I don't want any press there. He flew from Pittsburgh to Baltimore and he came and he sat by her bed. I'm getting, every time I think about this, he gave Beth her own neighborhood show. He 
left me all of his puppets because he didn't want me to be alone when I woke up. It wasn't too long after that that Bethy did wake up. When she woke up and we called Mr. Rogers, he said, praise God. And their friendship continued. Every year he would call me on my birthday and we would talk for like an hour and we would write each other a couple times a month. We def definitely desperately need more people to be like him. And so many times we will say, what would? What would Fred do? Just be kind. Yep. And everybody is worthy and lovable. Yep. Just the way they are.